you will not absolutely know where you're going to end up being. And that's part of the beauty of it. And even when you end up in a place where you don't want to be, like let's go back to this example of moving from a toxic to a healthy relationship, you might end up in a relationship that you realize you actually don't want to be in. Maybe you want something better. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of In The Clear. Our goal with this podcast is to help you get clarity on all aspects of your life using a balanced and holistic approach that employs both logic and emotion. Today's episode is going to be all about change and why we find it so hard, but why it's so necessary in order for us to live our lives the way that we want to. First off, I want to say... I know we haven't been consistent with posting a new episode every Tuesday, but moving forward, we are committed to post a new episode every Tuesday morning, and when that's not the case, we will make sure that you know. Recently, I published my new book, The Only Constant. It's part of the reason why I haven't been able to be consistent with creating new episodes and putting them out there. And it's such an exciting life change for me because for the first time ever, I've opened up in ways that I haven't before. I know for those of you who've read any one of my past books, including Welcome Home, you know that I've been on a journey to share more and more about myself and also to share more and more about what led me to think and feel the way that I do. So the reason I wanted to talk about change today is obviously because the only constant is finally out in the world, but also because I just had 10 back-to-back interviews today. They were radio interviews. And as I was answering those questions... All I was thinking was, I wish every single one of my audience members would hear the things that I'm saying, because it felt like the things I was being asked were things that I struggled with so much in the past, and I wished that I could have these conversations, so I knew that you would appreciate that. So let's begin with the very first question, why is change so hard? And the simple answer is, change is hard because we want it to be easy. Change is hard because it causes a break in our reality. And that doesn't mean that the breaking part, the chaos part, the mess part is bad. It doesn't mean that it's an indication that we need to go back on the change that we chose for ourselves. So think of anything that you're contemplating doing. Maybe you're thinking of changing your program in school. Maybe you're thinking of ending a relationship that you're in. Maybe you're thinking of getting into a new relationship. Maybe you're thinking of all the dynamics that you've been putting up with with your friend group. Maybe you really want to change that. So just think of the change that you're going for that you're really struggling with, okay? If it was easy, you would have already done it. If it was simple, you would have already done it. Change is not an easy thing. The bigger the change, the more difficult it is for you to achieve it. But half the battle, and more than half the battle, is understanding that the resistance that we feel when we move in a different direction than the one that we've been on is so natural. It's actually supposed to happen. It's your indication, your inner indication that you are moving in a direction different from the one that you've been on. And that's what you want, isn't it? So when you start feeling that resistance from within, try to have a conversation with it and with yourself and ask that resistance, what are you trying to tell me? Because sometimes we think that that resistance, because it doesn't feel good, that it's telling us this is not good for you. Not everything that doesn't feel good isn't good for you. Things that are good for you might feel as you're getting towards them that they're not for you. If you spent your entire life pleasing other people, and you decide, I no longer want to be a people pleaser, I want to put myself first, that's hard. 
it's not going to come to you so easily like that's it you know people pleasing is an indication that i'm abandoning myself and once i'm able to logic my way through it i'm going to be able to break out of being a people pleaser doesn't work that way because the first time you say no you're going to feel like you are the worst person on the planet you're going to feel like you're doing something wrong because you're so used to saying yes all the time of course it's going to feel wrong you're going to feel guilty you're going to feel like this doesn't resemble you it's weird because you feel like you're abandoning yourself even though you're moving toward a better version of yourself so maybe that little bit of abandonment has to happen but you're not really leaving yourself behind you're leaving behind things that no longer serve you patterns that no longer serve you people who no longer serve you a school program that no longer serves you a career that no longer serves you that shedding that happens of past versions of ourselves is painful is uncomfortable because something new is coming into our lives and we are walking into something new and our bodies like we don't know this we've never felt this before we've never experienced this before let's go back to what we know how to navigate think of being in a very toxic relationship that doesn't come out of nowhere you probably have a pattern of learning how to navigate relationships like that with your family, with your friends, that led that kind of toxicity to be familiar to you in some way. So when you reflect on that, let's say you are aiming to be in a healthy relationship. Let's say you are aiming to no longer be in this relationship, okay? Because sometimes change is more about what we're moving toward and sometimes it's more about what we're moving away from. So some people will say, I need to make this change because the environment I'm in is absolutely toxic to me and some people will say for the same exact change I want to change this or I need to change this because I want to be in a healthy relationship. So ask yourself, I actually wrote about this in the only constant quite a bit. Are you someone who's motivated by pain, who's motivated by your breaking point like you will get to a point where you can no longer handle something and then you change when you reach your breaking point or are you someone who's motivated by the beauty that could come after this do you focus on when you're thinking of this change that you're contemplating what is your main focus is it moving far away from the reality that you're in right now or moving toward the reality that you want to be in and I used to be one of those people who's motivated by my breaking point. I I had to make this change. I had to end that relationship. I had to break that bond with somebody. I had to leave that career path that I was on. I used to wait until I could no longer take it and now I would love and I'm working on it to be motivated by how beautiful my changed life could be. So reflect on what it is that motivates you. And once you're done doing that, now imagine, let's go back to the example that we were talking about, leaving a relationship that's no longer good for you. It's really not good for you. So imagine now entering a space where you're not on edge anymore at all times. You're not constantly looking to see how that person's feeling so that you could adapt your behavior in a way. You're no longer anticipating what their mood is going to be like so that you can know what you can and can't say and what you can and can't do. You no longer wake up in the morning and wonder, I wonder if it's going to be a good day or not today. You're no longer thinking of the reaction that they're going to have to absolutely everything that you choose to do, even if it has nothing to do with them. How does that feel? to just visualize isn't that such a huge change from what you've been used to your entire life so 
when you start moving toward those things where the things that meant so much to you in your everyday life are no longer present, your body's going to be like, this is an unpredictable environment. I don't know how to feel without having something constantly triggering me. I don't know how to feel when all this time that I used to spend on worrying about this person and their feelings and what makes them happy and what makes them comfortable, I don't know what to do with it. So you start feeling like you don't know how to navigate the peace and you don't know how to navigate the comfort and you don't know how to navigate the healthy environment that you're in. Whether you've entered a new relationship yet or not, but even being far away from what you've always known, from what your familiar was, from what your certain was, from all the patterns that you knew how they operate. You knew when to be quiet. You knew when you could say something and how you could say it in a way where it wouldn't elicit a reaction. You knew when a reaction did come about how you can deal with it. You knew, even though it didn't feel good. Remember, we talked about the feeling good versus being good. Even though it didn't feel good to have to navigate all of that, the knowing of how to navigate it gives you some kind of peace because you know that you'll survive. Because you know that certain things you do and say will help you stay safe. And we've talked about this before. There are two types of safety. And you have to ask yourself, what kind of safety do you want to go for? Do you want to go for the kind of safety where you can imagine it's constrictive, you're going inwards, you're trying to protect yourself, you're just trying to not be hurt, and at the same time, you're not shining, you're not projecting yourself into the world, you're protecting yourself. There's another kind of safety that is expansive where you can fully be yourself and project your true self into the world and you know that you will be welcomed and loved and accepted and you will feel comfortable in that safety. What kind of safety do you want to go for? The kind of safety where it's like, better the devil you know? I recently spoke to Lisa Bilyeu about this on her podcast where I said we stay in realities that we know are making us miserable or we're not happy in them anymore because we know how to navigate them. They're familiar to us. Better the devil you know. And then the contemplation came of how about we say better the angel you don't know yet. Better the peace you don't know yet. Better the success you didn't think you could have that you now now have yet. Better the healthy dynamic that you don't know yet. Change scares us because it puts us in a situation where we have to be uncertain about where we're headed. This new healthy environment that you can logically say is healthy for you and is good for you in your body, it feels like what on earth is going on? We don't know how to live in this environment. If you think of a fish that's living in really poisonous, toxic water, really murky water, and we take it out and we put it in fresh, healthy water for it that all the other fish would swim in and they would be fine in, it probably would die because of the shock to its system. Because it has adapted and learned to be in a very murky environment. It's the same thing with us. It doesn't mean that that healthy water isn't good for the fish. It just means that it's so new, it caused a shock to its system and it couldn't handle it. So think that way of the changes you are going for where you're moving towards something that's so much better for you, but maybe because you're not used to it, you experience that shock in your body and you think, I can't survive this. So you go back. You can absolutely survive what you know is good for you. So when you experience that fear of uncertainty, I want you to imagine this visual. Close your eyes and 
And imagine that you are driving on a foggy road and with any foggy road, you'll notice that you go through little patches of fog where you can't see anything at all. But you know that you're going to get to the other side of that little patch of fog. You can't focus on whether you're going to get to the end of the road or not. You know you will at some point, but your focus needs to be on trusting that you will be able to get through this patch and the one after and the one after until you get to a point where you've reached the end destination or you've reached that change that you're hoping for. You will not absolutely know where you're going to end up being. And that's part of the beauty of it. And even when you end up in a place where you don't want to be, like let's go back to this example of moving from a toxic to a healthy relationship, you might end up in a relationship that you realize you actually don't want to be in. Maybe you want something better. So don't base this change of leaving a toxic relationship or environment on whether the new environment that you went into was actually the right one for you where it's like I've succeeded I walked away from this and I walked into what I want you might walk into 10 relationships after that and they still might not be the best that you know you can get they still not might not be aligned with you and the key is to trust yourself in learning and to trust yourself in being able to get over that next heartbreak and the one after that self-trust is a huge ingredient on your journey to change. It doesn't make it easy. It makes it more led by you. It makes it so that that self-leadership within you takes an active role. You're not waiting for someone to come and save you. You're not waiting for someone to come and give you the answers. You're not waiting for someone to come and make it all worthwhile. You are leading that change. You are leading yourself to wherever you want to be. And when you don't get there, you are the one who sits with you and says, we tried, we learned something new, we grew as a person, we met this new person, we made that new connection, we made that new mental connection for something that we've been struggling with for so long, we've come closer to who we are. And that's so beautiful. So I want you to take away from this that Change is hard because it introduces things into our reality that we are simply not acquainted with, that we haven't spent enough time with. Of course, it's going to feel difficult. Change is hard because as we are walking away from the initial reality that we are in, we are feeling like we're leaving something behind. We're giving up on something. There is a sadness, and I've said this before in one of my books, there is a sadness attached to some endings that no beginning can ever erase. And sometimes you need to grieve the life you had before or the part of life that you had before and say to yourself, just because I'm walking away from this, it doesn't mean that I've given up. Maybe it means that I've done the best I can and it seems like this doesn't belong in my life. If you are looking for more guidance on change, I invite you to buy The Only Constant. You can get it in hardcover. You can get it in e-versions. I also narrate the audiobook, so please go and listen to it if you're a better listener. And I hope that it gives you the guidance that you need on this journey of change of yours. I know I said I wanted to talk about so many different kinds of change that we go through but I think it's a great start for us to discuss why change is hard and then we can move to more specific types of change which I hope to be able to present to you over the next few weeks. Maybe I'll even stop now and start a new episode so that you can be guaranteed to listen to it after this one. Thank you so much for listening. From Stefan and I, thank you so much for listening to every single episode. And we hope to see you next week.